In our previous video, we discussed what integ enterprise integration patterns are and how Apache CAMEL can be used with enterprise integration patterns. In this video, we're going to do a proof of concept, which is we're going to write a CAMEL route that moves an item from one queue to a different queue. This is a pretty straightforward proof of concept, but we will expand this in a future video to move something from a queue to an email. And the nice thing about that is you can get an alert, say if somebody uploads a photo or uploads a new plant, in our case, you might want to get an alert so that you can authorize it and make sure that it agrees with your terms of service, make sure that somebody's, you know, not uploading an inappropriate photo or something like that, you know. But in, the bigger picture is that CAMEL, Enterprise Integration Patterns, these are used for gluing applications together. And many times a queue is a thing that kind of is the golden nail that holds applications together. Because one application can write to a queue and then a queue will have guaranteed delivery. So in other words, what is written to that queue will remain on that queue until another application picks the object off of the queue. Even if the computer powers down, that item will still be on the queue when the, when the computer powers back up. That's one of the features you can give to a persistent queue mechanism. So what do we need to do to do this? Well, we could continue to leverage our existing web project, but honestly, because enterprise inter integration patterns are integration between projects, it's not a bad idea to make this a, a new web project. So we're going to create a new web, web project. We have a series of dependencies that I have predefined, and naturally I'll post these to GitHub so that you can see them as well. Now in a web project, we're going to get WebXML, which defines the web project, and we need to tell WebXML about Spring. We need to tell it where to find our typical application context file that we've been using all along, and we also need to tell it where to find our camel config XML, which is where we're going to define our routes. Now, to be honest with you, we could put this all together in one uh, configuration file, but it's a good idea to kind of separate files, just uh, especially in a multiple, uh, multiple developer application, because you don't want all developers changing the same file at the same time. Surely we have merge tools that will help us with this, but let's avoid the headache from the start. So we'll put them in two different files. After that, we need a queue connection factory. Now, the good news is we're going to be able to leverage something we did in a previous video. We don't have to create this from scratch because we've already connected to a queue. Then we need a route. The route defines, here's the queue I'm going to listen to, and here's the queue I'm going to publish to. And then after that, we need to put something on the queue and test it out. So let's give it a try. I'm going to go to, uh, you see right now, if I look at my, at my virtual machine, I have one queue. This is the photos queue that we've been using all along when a user uploads a photo. Now what I'm going to do is go back to Eclipse and start a new web project. and just clean things up just a little bit here. I'm going to say File and then New. Uh, now we have a choice here. Do we want to do a web project or a dynamic web project? Web project would be static, would be just HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Dynamic web project is going to give us a Java path as well where we can compile things. That's what we want because remember, one of the things that we can do in a camel route is we can enhance a message. So we can read a message from a queue. We can change that message and put it on another queue. In other words, maybe add some missing elements and then put it on another queue. So I'm going to call this Enterprise Integration. I should probably give it a more descriptive name than that. Uh, you know, that, that's one of those where we don't want to have Enterprise Integration 1, 2, 3, 4. But okay, for the moment we're going to leave this at Enterprise Integration. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. And I'm going to choose Finish. Because this is a web project, it's going to create for us uh, a web XML. Memory serves right at least. We might have to make that ourselves after all. Uh, what I'm also going to do is I've started this as a web project, but I want to take advantage of those dependencies that we can get with Maven. The nice thing is then we just paste the dependencies in and then we're good to go. So I'm going to right click and choose Convert to Maven Project. Again, everything looks good. We have our POM XML. So I'm going to navigate to the POM. And I'm going to go to the, uh, I kind of like the text editor a little bit better. 
and we see this is basically a native palm. This is as minimal as you can get. So I'm going to add dependencies, plural. And this section is where I'm going to put my dependencies. Now, uh, I'll be honest with you, in, prepar in preparing for this video, I went through a long process to determine all of the dependencies. The documentation on Apache site is great. Uh, but nonetheless, for your specific implementation, which for us is a Q to Q implementation, there might be other dependencies that you need. So I went through a long process of figuring out all of these dependencies. And instead of going through them one at a time, I will just make them available on GitHub. So I save, Control M. We'll give it a moment, and then we'll update our Maven project. And update project, which is going to make sure that we have all these dependencies. And we'll let that go for a moment. Now I realized when I created this project, I went a little fast and I did not tick a box that said generate the web XML, which is why I do not have a web XML. Uh, if you're doing this by watching the video, I recommend just tick that box. That'll save you a bit of time. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is it's okay for me because I already have another web XML that I can borrow. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and borrow that web XML. I'm just going to copy. And I'll show you the differences that I needed to do uh, to make this work. So web INF, I'm going to right-click and choose paste. And, okay, that's fine. And now let's collapse a little bit. We'll clean up, let this go. And now we have essentially a basic web XML. So I will save. Now I need to tell, remember one of our steps was we have to tell uh, web XML about Spring. So we've done step one, step two. Now we're going to go on step three. We're going to tell it about application context XML and camel config XML. So how do we do that? Well, we need a couple things, which I, I've conveniently put over here in Notepad. This listener class, this essentially says, hi, I'm Spring enabled. Now this is just a little bit different from how we enabled Spring earlier uh, when we were doing a JSF project, because in that case, we wired Spring into JSF. In this case, we're not going to use JSF. This is what we're going to call a headless application. In other words, an application without a user interface or with a minimal user interface, uh, because we're just moving things around. So the listener class says, hi, I want to use Spring. The next thing I need is a context param, and that says, Here's the location of my Spring files. Now, to be honest with you, you know, I tell you what, I'm just going to cut this down to application context. We'll do this a slightly different way. We know that application context typically is the configuration file for Spring. Notice that it has this class path colon. This is a little bit tricky. I'm going to save and control M. What is my class path? Uh, it, it's a little hard to see in a project like this. In theory, anything under the source folder here is in your class path, but you really don't want to put non-Java things there unless you absolutely have to, because the source folder should just be Java source code. The other thing that's going to go on the class path is anything in web inf classes. There is no classes directory, so we're going to need to make one. And that's why I say it's not too obvious if you're just looking at a project that's been freshly made. So we'll say web inf and then classes. Now, not to confuse things more, but what do you think a directory called classes is going to have in it? Well, it's not going to have classes. That's one thing. It's going to have configuration files. So application context, uh, you know, gosh, we could type one from scratch, but you know what? Why? Uh, why bother with that when we can just go take the one that we've already been using in our faces project? So I'm going to grab our application context. As soon as I, uh, yeah, there it is, sorry, right in front of me and I didn't see it. I'm going to grab this and choose copy. We are going to gut most of it, though. We're going to take a lot of it out, but some of it we're going to save. And then paste. Okay. And expand and double click. Make sure we're looking at the right one because at this point we have multiple uh, projects open. So let's make sure we're editing the right one. Okay. Here's the cool part. We have a factory here, an ActiveMQ connection factory. And remember, one of the things that we need to do is a Q connection factory. Well, why do we already have that here? Because remember, several videos ago, we wrote a class that connects to an active MQ queue. And for that, we created this connection factory. So we get to reuse that.
Okay, we don't need some of these other entries that we had. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to do a component scan so we can use annotations, but we don't have any Java classes right now, so this isn't going to be any use to us for the moment. So I'll comment it out. By the way, I will make a, a little style footnote here. Committing commented code is not a good idea if you're committing to a source code repository. Keep in mind the source code repository keeps history, so you don't need to duplicate history in comments. A better idea might be to commit and then remove and then commit again, and then you can always do a diff to take a look at that history. So I'm do as I say, not as I do here. I am going to go ahead and comment this one out, and I'm going to choose save. Now, the next thing I want to do from this application context is I want to include another file. And as I said, we could put all these files together in one, but really when working with multiple developers, we would prefer to use multiple files when possible. So I'm going to use the spring import statement, which is simply less than symbol. Do a little formatting of this in just a moment. moment. Import, and we're going to say resource equals, and then we're going to say camel-config XML. We could name that whatever we want, but uh, camel-config is kind of the default name. So import resource camel-config XML, and then we're going to save. So I right-click on classes, and I say new, and then we're going to say just files fine, and we'll say camel-config.xml, and choose finish. Okay, now, uh, because this is an extension of application context, it's going to have a very similar root element. Remember, the root element is in XML is the open and close tag that starts and ends the file. Uh, one difference, though, it is going to have a new schema location for camel. And so I've copied an example here, one I just got off the web and, and I'm just modifying a bit. Uh, notice the last line that I'm highlighting here has camel.apache.org. So that's giving us our camel validation. And once again, I'll post all this to GitHub uh, so that you can just copy straight off what I'm doing. So we do our element here. Uh, we do our open and close element. And this is the file we're going to use to define our routes. So I will save. Okay, how's our list looking? So, web project, Maven dependencies, tell web about Spring, create these two. We have our queue connection factory. We're going to need to define a bean for the queue as well. And then we need a route, and then we need to put something on the queue. So, uh, the queue connection factory, what we're actually going to need to do is define a bean for the queue manager. Now, I have that, uh, something I've borrowed here, you know, just copy pasted here to be quick. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to put it up in application context. And just like so, control V. Okay, queue manager. Uh, notice that what the queue manager is doing is it is using our connection factory and it's using a predefined JMS component. Okay, what do I mean by that? Connection factory tells us how we're going to connect to ActiveMQ. Our default port to connect to ActiveMQ is 6161. Six. Now, that's not the port we use to view ActiveMQ. That's 8161. That's for us as humans. But computers talking to a queue, to ActiveMQ in particular, are going to use this port 61616. And what we're saying is, okay, that's the connection information. Now I'm going to load that to a queue manager, which I can reference in a later beam. Now, one caution. One caution, if you take a look at Apache's website, they have several good examples on connecting to a queue. Um, they do it a slightly different way, and it kind of confused me a bit. What they do is they use this transport connector. Now, I tried that, and I kept getting address and use JVM bind. The reason is this is trying to basically start ActiveMQ within the application, but we have ActiveMQ running as a separate program. So if you're getting that JVM bind, maybe you're using their template, which again is great. Uh, it just doesn't suit what we're doing here where we already have ActiveMQ installed as a service. So for that, we want to do a connection factory and then a queue manager. Okay, so how do we use the queue manager? Well, I have a route defined. Uh, I'm going to grab this route and we're going to paste. And let's just let this, I predefined the route just, uh, you know, for the sake of speed of this video. But we can get a pretty good idea of what's going on here. Do you see this from URI? Well, first of all, 
you see we're within a route tag. Okay. Within the route, we have a from and a to. And then we can do anything in between the from and the to. In this case, we're doing a log. We could also do some of those operations we talked about in the previous video of filtering a message, routing a message, enhancing a message. At this point, between the from and the to, we can even call a Java class and have it enhance the message somehow, which is really cool stuff. We can look at that in a future video if you're interested. But at this point, we need a where am I going to find the information and where am I going to put the information. Okay, so we start with this queue manager alias, and the queue manager, remember, that's the bean we've just defined here, and then we say, okay, I'm looking at a queue as opposed to what? Well, as opposed to a topic, okay? And what's the name of the queue? Well, the name of the queue is photos, okay? And now I'm simply going to pick up from there, and I'm going to drop on here a queue named outbox. What's the queue named outbox? Let's take a look. It hasn't been defined yet. But remember, we're using ActiveMQ, and one of the things I really like about ActiveMQ is that it is this configuration-less deployment. So in other words, if you try to write to a queue and the queue doesn't exist, ActiveMQ says, okay, no problem, and it makes the queue. So one of our success criteria here will simply be, uh, do we have an outbox queue? Now remember, this is a story of integration. And something's going to have to put a message on the queue in the first place. So I already have the Plant Places app running, the one that we've developed already. And what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to add uh, our new web application that we've made to the same server. doesn't have to be on the same server, to be honest with you. It doesn't even have to be on the same machine because a queue, if set up properly, a queue can be on a different machine. And once again, we're talking about integration. Uh, some of our software might be in the cloud, for lack of a better word. Some might be on a server. Some might be on a mobile phone. So these don't have to be on the same machine uh, not to mention, they don't have to be in the same web service, but uh, we'll go ahead and deploy these together, and then we'll take a look. Now the application's running. Let's try it out. I'm going to launch our Plant Places application. Okay, I'll just search on red, naturally. Okay, uh, Pleasant Valley Red Oak, that's fine. Select one of our specimens. We'll go ahead and pick this one that I created. Okay. And now I'm going to pick a file. Doesn't matter. Tulips is fine, even though that's not really what this plant is. But okay, we'll say our date taken, uh, the date I'm recording this video. Contributor is me. Now, remember, this web application we've already created, and this is going to put the picture on the queue. So I hit submit. It's going into, you know, it's going into the breakpoint. Again, we're not in the application that we just wrote. We're in the Plant Places application that we've written previously. Now, if you take a look at this jmsbean.submit, that's what put it on the queue. And we see we did not get an exception thrown, so things are looking pretty good. A few other things are running now, like doing the thumbnail, things like that. Let me go ahead and press play. Now, uh, we see it's also inserted into Hibernate. Again, that's all things we made before. Now time for the success criteria. Let's see how we're looking. I'm going to go back to ActiveMQ. I'm going to hit refresh and take a look. We have success. It has created the queue called Outbox and take a look what's on it. One message is on the queue called Outbox. No message on Photos. So you see what it's done is it's picked up the message from Photos. It's put it onto Outbox. This is just the beginning. We could certainly use a topic. Remember a topic is that concept of uh, multiple subscribers to a queue, uh, or a topic as it is. We could transform the we could transform the image. We could turn it upside down. We could put it in an email. Many more things to come, and we'll discover those in a future video when we take a look at pulling off of a queue and creating an email. So uh, I look forward to seeing you then. I think it's going to be very fun.